how do we measure contact? Yeah. Uh, and I think we probably should do it um, because I think oftentimes what gets measured gets, you know, attended to, yeah. as it were. And I think what's interesting about this one, you know, um, I'll just riff on that for a minute because I've lived with measurement scorecards all my life. Yeah. Um, one of the things you got to be careful about is understanding your intentions of measuring a certain thing and then the unintended consequences of that. And so we could say, well, what we're measuring are new ministries open. And then you get a whole bunch of new ministries open, but then the existing ministries um, don't do as well. Okay? Which may have been at some points in our history that could happen. But we're all about club. We just want club. We want the biggest numbers of club and to the exclusion of everything else. So some people want to go just dial in on one thing because they like focus and they like sloganing and they like kind of communications and there's something good about that. But there's an unintended consequence of overdoing that. I actually believe, I've thought about this a lot, I'm not so sure there's as big, that maybe there is a negative consequence. I'm not so sure there's much of a negative consequence about saying let's do as much contact work as we can. Let's be with kids. Mm -hmm. I think it has such a resonating blessing on other things. Mm -hmm. It is somewhat unlike mm -hmm. anything else we might measure because it is so foundational to who we are. When I say contact work, I mean even with adults. Yeah. So this isn't, oh, well, you're only hanging out with kids and you're not really. No, I think this is attending to the leaders, as I said, in supervision that we have, and then also those adult stakeholders who come in with us too, because we're just building a missing community. We want them, as, as uh, somebody told me, Schofield told me about one of our donors, one of our biggest donors. He said, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's almost 70 years old, but he's a 16-year-old he's a at heart. And at, at a minimum, uh, at a very fundamental level, dude, he wants a relationship with you, yeah. regardless of what else is going on. I think it is going to be hard to measure. I remember back, I'll just tell a story. So when I was, where I met Susan in Charlottesville, Virginia, after I graduated from uh, my undergraduate degree, I was doing Young Life there. I, I chose to go in and meet with Rick Barr, Rick and Beth Barr. And uh, they were the area directors. And I remember them saying, okay, you want to do, you know, you want to be a Young Life leader? I had a job, busy job. Uh, I was trying to make my way uh, as, a, as a new graduate in my first role. And I can remember Rick looking at me, because it 15 to 20 hours a week. That's what we want. Can you do that? The implicit point in that question was if you can, do something else. Now, that's a, that was a statement. I'm not suggesting that we are that clear. But I, you know what happened for me to Jeremy's weeding out question is, I wanted to be in on that, so what I did was weed some other things out. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't do some other things. So I'm working, and I'm doing Young Life. That's what I'm doing. Because I probably don't have much more time in my schedule and that was what I did. But we really ought to be lifting up those who are doing the incarnational work and we've got to be careful that we don't diminish that work by throwing too many folks into the same bucket. Because there's probably a you know about a third of our areas have budgets that would suggest there's really only one person there, it's them. So there's not an area administrator unless it's somebody's volunteering their time. Uh, it's not baked into the budget. So probably four hundred fifty of our 1,400 areas or so down. And so are there things that we could do there in terms of some, you know, there is administrative work that needs to be done. There's some things that we still choose to hold on to, so I think there's help that we can give in that way. Mm -hmm. Then I think there's some cultural change we've got to have. In other words, I think we hang on to certain things down at that area director level because we're used to doing them. And it provides us a sense of autonomy, but maybe around things that are not the best things. But are there some things that not just could be taken off your plate, but you'd have to let go of so that you could say yes to the bigger things? The area director job, in addition to not having much the rhythm and rest, it tends to be, you know, many, 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 many things, mm -hmm. many little things. And you can't do all things at once. So somehow you may need to think about a sequence. That's a plan. That's what strategy is about, saying no to some prioritizing others. I think there's some training we could do on that as well. If I may, because you've just prompted me, another thing I think we need to do is train people how to be really good leaders. And, uh, and I'll, I'll use this because it'll make a point. Um, I think there's a progression that people go through, and this is just a way of thinking about it, to being someone that's an individual contributor. It's not that different from maybe what you'd see in Collins's more elaborate, you know, kind of book on 
um, good to great. But individual contributors, basically, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. I'm doing it. And we've got a lot of people in the mission who probably still operate as individual contributors. Not because that's a, it's a bad thing, I'm not suggesting it is, but you've just, you've defined your boundaries more or less in, in there. Then you can move up, I, I would say, in what I would refer to just as a hub and spoke situation, where still everything sort of passes through that in, you know, you. And that's a, that's a level of leadership. It's a team leader and, and still that, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but, but I think there is still a, a limitation, some of a limitation there if you are that person. I think then the question is, how can you begin to be a leader of leaders who are actually leading teams as well? And this is where you want to get to, and I say this is true of an area director and, and, and multiple leaders, right, in, in our mission. And I think this is the challenge. And, and there's some things we could talk about, probably don't have time to talk about today, maybe we do, and some questions of how do you move in this way? And I've been around in life long enough to know <coughs> and watch some of these limitations occur, which gets back to one other thing I want to say that's an essential piece. This work of going into the lives of kids and building relationships with them is slow, it's inefficient, it's extravagant, mm -hmm. it's luxurious, it's maddening, and it's all that beautiful mess that we call incarnational mission or incarnational witness. The only way we can do it is if we multiply ourselves. We cannot staff up to make that happen. Where there's, there, there, I think there's a little bit of a jag we were on where there was at least a staff-centered kind of notion around this. We are the envy of most other ministries in terms of the volunteers we have. When we say it's 12 or 13 to 1, but truthfully, in the U.S., half of our volunteers on the rolls are actually doing contact work, and that would be generous. Okay? That would be generous. So my point is, our model is so deep and so unique in many ways, it requires us to multiply ourselves beyond the staff. Mm -hmm. And that gets us in, I'm going to give you a hand out later, that gets into the, well, why would somebody want to join us? First, they ought to be deep lovers of Jesus, Jeremy. But then second, we ought to be creating an environment, a mission community, sent ones who are together, that is attractive. That people go, I want some of that. Because most of my life, and the little groups, Christian, non-Christian, don't have that, okay? They don't have that. And in Ephesians 4, it is underneath Jesus' headship, each doing his own right role, her right role, and the overflow, the aroma, it smells <clears throat> like love, is what basically Ephesians 4. If you look at those latter ones right through uh, 14 through 16. Creating that environment where people go, I want to sign up, but then we've got to be able to lead them in a way that doesn't betray this notion of staff centricity. Sure. Are you saying that as a continuum, or are you hoping that people start on top? No. I think actually, you know, if you look at Collins' book, he talks about it like this, you know, gets to this level five thing. You start off being a good individual contributor. You gotta learn how to do the work, right? right? And you learn to do that, and then maybe you learn how to work with others uh, and, you know, on a team, then you maybe supervise a team, then you become a level four leader, which I can't remember what, Things were in a level four leader, but it's pretty good. And then you get to that last one where you're level five. I think it's a progression. Yeah. And I think it's something that can be taught. I really actually do think it's something that can be taught. One thing I would say, though, that helps this person be really good is that part of their time is still actually down there being with kids. It's part of their time still being down there with kids. I will tell you, my wife can say it. She'll say it with more gusto than I will say it. Oh, my gosh, we love being with Jessica. Oh my gosh, we love being with kids. But being with kids, it would be priceless. Priceless. Absolutely priceless. We're in this mission because we love kids and we love Jesus. And we want to be with them more. Unfortunately, because of my position, the seat, the shirt I wear and get to sweat, is uh, I don't get to do that very much. But we're going to do another assignment because we want to be out there. It keeps us. So what I'm trying to say to you is, if we can say, yeah, a little more episodic, you know, <laughs> every day or every week, 
But we're going to try and find times where we can be with kids too. I don't think that just because you're a leader of leaders, it means you're not in touch. Okay? Best ones are in touch. I recognize that we could ruin it if we overly focused on the measurement piece of it, right? I mean, in other words, it could end up becoming, we could lose the heart, yeah. and we could end up, because as human beings, we, we unfortunately don't always operate out of love, we operate out of fear. And as we operate out of fear, particularly in a hierarchy, we could find ourselves then going, well, I'm gonna make this look good, because yeah. they're measuring it right now, and we could ruin it. It's probably right that we do look at it, measure it, but boy, oh boy, I want it done in a way that feels like it's life-giving and that you are accountable people that you don't have to, in a wrestling room, be held accountable, right? <laughs> That's what I think about when held accountable. Why did and Jane? Look, I, I, to give a picture of, I don't want to get into it, a picture of what I'm talking about. What if we started every leadership meeting by celebrating the kids that we met that week? But we took the time and said that's going to be a part of everywhere we go. Because that's where what we take responsibility, what we talk about, that's what people value. And then if we did that, it would be a game changer. I agree. 